Got to make sure I have the essential colors. Oh man, I use a bunch of colors when I do portraits. Um, toffee, latte, flesh, cappuccino, rusto, makeup, bone, dirty apricot, black red, chestnut, vampire, shock brown, lip, ancient pink, dusty pink. Yeah, that's a good base. Gotta have the jams. data is what most people know me as. I've been using the name Mez for since 1995, around there. My first exposure to graffiti would be through hip-hop music and culture. You know, I'd see a little bit of graffiti in magazines or in videos, not a lot in real life in the 80s in Texas, you know? And I didn't understand it early on. But then I started getting uh, the Source magazine and uh, a guy from New York named Chino had a single page spread of graffiti in every issue. And that's kind of what sparked it off for me. I started doing freelance work for a, a mural company out of California, um, just doing advertising murals and stuff like that. And that's when it started to dawn on me like, oh my gosh, I can actually do this. Before that, I, it was never even a thought, you know, that I could paint graffiti for a living. I've not been big on marketing or advertising or things like that because I also like to cultivate what I'm working on. And I want my clients to walk away going, I own a Mez and not in other ways where it's like, oh, I commissioned this guy to paint this thing that was my idea, you know, so kind of staying low key has helped develop those sort of clients that appreciate who I am as an artist and not just somebody that's providing a service. Graffiti is sort of an institution in and of itself. It's been around since the 70s and there's kind of a way of doing things and, and a hierarchy in both what you produce and how it's produced. Graffiti's kind of got these elements that are, that are particular, like I said, really letter-based, you know, the wild style, the learning how to tag, learning your can control, doing all these things, the, the hierarchy of, you know, crews and this and that. As where street art, back in the day, was more stickers, we'd pay stencils. Now street art is more murals. See, graffiti artists, we've been doing murals forever. You know, and then people have been doing murals before us. You know, there's always a lineage. The only difference is it's being done with spray can. Sloka has a better analogy. Street art's a kiss on the cheek and graffiti is a punch in the mouth. <laughs> The graffiti scene in Austin is pretty small. The amount of people that are active in graffiti in Austin kind of varies. You've got a lot of old guys that are still kind of active. And then, you know, it seems like every couple of years there'll be a new crop of uh, the young bomber kids that'll kind of hit the streets and you'll see them up everywhere and then they'll kind of fade away. The real, like what we would consider real graffiti artists uh, on a national or international level is, is very, very small. You know, I could probably count on both hands artists here that could hold their own when it comes to piecing and doing characters. Mez was always the character guy. I mean, Mez can do letters, but in my opinion, he's hands down the best character artist in Austin. But he, he don't ever buff walls. <laughs> he always shows up late. I always show up late. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good guy right here. Thanks, man. I met Sly in 2009, he had just moved to Austin, and Sly was an amazing artist. He could do it all. He could do hand styles, bubble letters, pieces, characters, like, he was a good writer, good artist. Me and Mez and Sly, we started to paint a lot. 
Because once again, it was a small scene. And we just, we just clicked. When he passed, it, it affected a lot of people in Austin because Sly was well-liked. Yeah, Sloat called me. And uh, told me uh, what had happened. Because um, a friend of his is, is John's neighbor. And so, I didn't want to believe it at first, so I called the friend and was like, is this for real, you know? And it was. It hit Mez and I both hard, because we were probably the closest to him. So I told Mez, we need to honor him with a mural, like a tribute. You know, people know him from the hip hop thing, and people know him from the graffiti thing, and people know him from both. And so his legacy is is just being awesome. I mean, he was so good at everything he did. But I'm glad that we were able to do that. I think that was good for Mez and I because we, we both really loved Sly as a brother. Good time's too short. You gotta enjoy it while you got it, man. I guess going from, you know, this rebellious, anti-system sort of graffiti artist to somebody who's, you know, doing posters for Capital One and various other brands, you know, early on that was a hard thing for me to reconcile with myself. But then it's like, no, I'm doing what I want to do. I'm not selling out. I'm painting. Who cares who writes the check, I guess, you know, at the end of the day, because they're coming to me for what I do. And I'm not changing who I am for them, which to me would be the sellout aspect of it. Selling out would be not living up to my potential. The streets never paid my bills, you know? And to get paid doing what I enjoy doing, I don't see anything wrong with that. I never set out to do graffiti as a career, ever. You know, I mean, that's one of the things I'm so happy about today is the fact that I do get to do this for a living. It's like my little 17, 18 year old self in my head is just like, yeah, dude, like so pumped.